For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. In the spirit of March Madness, I want to propose a hypothetical scenario to you. During the first round of the NCAA Women's Tournament, Presbyterian, a school out of the Big South Conference and maybe the worst team in the 64-team field, played South Carolina. As in, the undefeated team out of the SEC that is the favorite by many to win the championship. No one in their right mind is giving Presbyterian a chance to win this scheme, and understandably so. When the teams met earlier in the season, South Carolina won 99-29. Presbyterian winning this scheme in the NCAA tournament wouldn't just be a massive upset. It would be one of the biggest upsets in the history of sports, and I don't say that lightly. However, what's interesting about Presbyterian is that the game was being played in Columbia, only an hour away. So if you were a Presbyterian fan and you wanted to go, you easily could have. Now, I want you to imagine that there was a travel company out there that was offering Presbyterian fans a chance to go to the game. They would pick you up on campus, and you get on the bus, buy the tickets through them, and they'd take you to the game and back. Round trip. Seems pretty convenient. You don't have to pay for gas, or deal with the hassle of getting in and out of the arena all game day. They take care of everything for you. Now, I want you to imagine that this travel company offers you a deal to go to this game. You only pay for the trip if Presbyterian wins. If South Carolina wins, your bus fare is free, your ticket is free, basically everything is free. If Presbyterian wins, as in the massive underdog and your team, you have to pay the cost of the ticket and the bus. But if they don't win, it's free. Running this promotion would seem, well, how do I put this lightly? Absolutely moronic and stupid. First off, betting on a team to win and having a promotion tie into something like that seems really dumb, because part of the beauty of sports is that nothing is guaranteed, and anything can happen. And it would be one thing if it was a situation where you cover the ticket, but the bus ride has to be paid for by them, so at least you still come out on top. And it's not like a mattress match situation, where he'll do this for the Houston teams, but then place a bet to count the losses and come out on top either way. I'm talking about going all in on a heavy underdog to win a game, and losing a crap ton of money that could significantly put a dent in the company if it goes haywire, which it likely will. Well, I bring all that up, because in 1986, one company thought that this was a legitimately good idea. One company genuinely thought, you know what sounds smart? Let's offer this promotion where we cover your ticket and bus fare if your team loses, where the team in question is expected to lose, and if your team wins, we barely come out on top. That sounds like a good business model, because during a game between the Cleveland Browns and the Buffalo Bills, one company gambled in the stupidest fashion and lost five figures in the process, which is a lot of money for a local company that wasn't doing the best financially anyways. Because this is the story behind one of the dumbest promotions and the dumbest scandals in the history of the NFL. Before I talk about the actual promotion in question, we need some context to understand how good and how bad the two teams were, and what the heck inspired this company to do this in the first place. The year is 1986, and this team right here, as in the Buffalo Bills, are one of the worst in football. Yes, they're better than they were before, thanks to quarterback Jim Kelly finally joining the team after three seasons in the United States Football League. But they're still a really bad team that had to fire its coach midway through the season because of how disastrous things were. With three games left in the season, the Bills had absolutely nothing to play for. They were 4-9, they were mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, and they were playing some pretty bad football, having lost two of their last three, four of their last six, and seven of their last ten. And when you enter this game with a bottom five offense in the AFC, a bottom five defense in the AFC, and a bottom five point differential in the AFC, it's not hard to see why you're not exactly doing so hot. 
and why your inner lines have missed the playoffs for the fifth straight season. And entering week 14, the Bills were set to play this team right here, as in the Cleveland Browns. Unlike the Bills, the Browns were one of the best teams in football. The Browns entered this scheme with a 9-4 record, and entered this scheme with the best record in the AFC Central, looking poised to win the division for the second straight season. Cleveland entered this scheme on a two-game winning streak, with their most recent win being an overtime battle against the Houston Oilers, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Cleveland entered this scheme having won five of their last six games and having won eight of their last ten, so these were two teams going in completely opposite directions. Unsurprisingly, when you put all those elements into play, the Browns enter this scheme against the Bills as favorites to win. And the Browns were hoping to win, not just so that they could maintain their lead on the AFC Central and possibly fight for the number one seed in the AFC at home field advantage throughout the playoffs, but because they were looking to do what they did the last time that they were in Buffalo. Because the last time the Browns and Bills played in Buffalo was 1984, two years before this. In that game, this game right here, the Browns came back late in the fourth quarter, and by the skin of their teeth, won it 13-10 on a touchdown by Ernest Spiner late in the fourth quarter. It wasn't the prettiest game by any means, even though the Browns dominated on the ground and had 211 rushing yards on nearly five yards a carry. But it was a notable game, because it was the first time as the new head of coach of the Browns that Marty Schottenheimer got a win. Schottenheimer would win 200 games over his illustrious NFL career, and is widely regarded today as one of the greatest coaches to never make the Super Bowl and be in the Hall of Fame. This win against the Bills from 1984 was win number one of many. But outside of that moment of historical significance, why do I bring up that meeting from 1984? What the heck does a game from 1984 have to do with this game right here? As in, the 1986 installment two years later. Well, because during that 1984 game, a travel company by the name of Rogers Tour and Travel had a massive dilemma. They bought a ton of non-refundable tickets to that game, thinking that it would be an easy sell. I mean, Cleveland is not even three hours away from Buffalo, so they've got some geographic footprint with fans in western New York. The weather would probably not be an issue, since the game was taking place the week after Halloween, so it's not like you had to worry about snow or brutally cold conditions. Plus, the Browns seemed to be in it every single season throughout the late 70s and the early 80s. They had a winning record in 1983, so you'd be getting a good opponent. However, there was one small problem. They couldn't sell the tickets. No one wanted to go to that game, which makes sense, seeing as the Bills enter that game with an 0-9 record as the worst team in football, and the Browns enter that game with a 1-8 record. No one wants to see a game featuring two teams with a combined record of 1-17. That's a form of torture prohibited by the Geneva Convention. Said Martha Rogers on that disaster, Two years ago in 1984, we were stuck with quite a few tickets we had bought in advance for the Browns-Bills game. The tickets were non-refundable, were mostly group travel, and once in a while, we retail with the Bills. Two years ago, at the group rate, we got a dollar off, or $14 a ticket. Rogers Tour and Travel didn't want that problem for this scheme right here for 1986. They learned their lesson from last time, and didn't want to eat a financial loss. Well, at the same time, they wanted to get people to use their company to go to the game, and thus from Rochester to Buffalo. So they had this brilliant idea, and by brilliant, I mean absolutely stupid. What if, and hear me out on this, you only pay if the Bills win the game? That's right. Under this promotion, fans would pay the company 30 bucks. With that $30 purchase, the company would transport fans from a meetup point in Rochester to Buffalo, where you'd be able to go to the game as the price of the ticket was included in that. If the Bills won the game, you would have to pay $30 to the company, so you cover the fee for the charter bus, and you cover the cost of the ticket. If the Bills lost the game, however, you owed absolutely nothing. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing. It was completely free, 
and the company ate everything. It seems too stupid to believe, right? Even Tom Rogers said as much regarding the reception to this promotion, saying, People just can't believe that we're offering a money-back guarantee. People ask if there's a catch, and we tell them, there's no catch. This is like if a Nigerian prince emails you and tells you that you've won money, and he's going to send it to your bank account, and you don't even have to message him back or give him any of your information or make any payments his way. It seems too good to be true and seems too dumb to actually be a legitimate thing. But that's what Rogers Tour and Travel was doing here. That's what Tom and Martha Rogers were offering, even though they had no contingency plan whatsoever. Said Tom, I did catch my wife in the back office, figuring out what would happen if they lost. Always a good sign when you create a promotion that has a high chance at failure, and you have no idea what's going to happen if said promotion fails. Which raises the obvious question. Why the heck would you pick the game against the Browns to do this? Why pick the game against one of the best and hottest teams in football? Why not pick, quite literally, any other game? The Bills had some games where they were the favorite. The Bills had some games against teams that they were semi-evenly matched with and had a conceivable chance of winning on paper. Why this game? It'd be like if you ran a promotion for a Big Ten team near the cellar. And instead of running this promotion for their game against a team like Indiana or Rutgers, you run the promotion for the game against Michigan at the Big House. Well, according to Martha Rogers, she didn't want to do that, even though everyone advised her to, because she wanted to give the Bills a confidence boost. Seriously. As if this was going to make any difference in the world, this was done to boost Buffalo's confidence. Said Martha, that's what everybody says. People keep telling us we should take a sure thing. Not that the Bills have improved to the point yet where they're ever that sure of a thing. But, you know, if we'd done that, I don't think we'd have had that many people interested. Besides, the Bills need a little boost. They need for people to show some confidence in them. Okay, two things. Number one, people are going to be interested in the promotion regardless of what team it's against. You get to go to an NFL game for free. If your team wins, you're happy, and all you really paid was the cost of the ticket and transportation, which might have been a lot even if you didn't go with that company because of gas money. If your team doesn't win, you don't lose anything. This is a gross misunderstanding of the psyche of NFL fans. I don't care who the Jaguars are playing. If you're telling me I lose nothing financially if they lose the game, and I get good seats and a good game day experience out of it, and if they win, I'm happy, and all I have to do is cover the cost of what it was going to pay anyways, and if I don't go, I can't watch the game because it's going to get blacked out? Yeah, I'll take that. I'll freaking take that. And number two, in the spirit of Martha Rogers, you know... I think my Jaguars need some confidence. You know, last season didn't go too well. There was a collapse at the end of the season. Didn't end well. Maybe the players are ejected after that. Maybe they're down on themselves. But you know what? Maybe they just need a pick-me-up. They need a confidence boost. The Jaguars need some confidence. So that's why I just emptied out my entire bank account. And I put all my life savings on the Jaguars to win the Super Bowl. I put this place on the line. I put my sports memorabilia on the line. I put all my money on the line, my car on the line. I put everything on the line. I emptied out the whole kitchen sink on the Jaguars winning the Super Bowl this year. Six figures plus, just because, you know what? This team needs a confidence boost. Because that's how this works. That's how this freaking works. Now, you might be saying, wait a second, time out. This company can absolutely afford the financial hit. If they lose this and lose over 4200 bucks or about $12,000 in today's money, it's barely a drop in the bucket. And yes, if this was a company like Disney or Budweiser or American Airlines running this promotion, I would agree and say that even though this seems stupid, it's not going to cost them in the long run. But no, this was a small travel agency. This wasn't some Fortune 500 company or some company that makes up that loss in one second. 
These people had vacation plans tied to this. Tom and Martha Rogers were super tight on money, and they were going to cancel a Christmas vacation to Florida if this didn't work out. Said Tom Rogers, If they win, we're going. If they lose, we'll have to work it out. There was a ton riding on this, and Tom even said that he had no idea if he was going to watch the game because he couldn't watch his money potentially slip away like that. Said Tom, We haven't decided yet whether we can stomach going to the game or watch it on TV. And it's not like the two of them didn't make the vacation plans to Florida yet, so the winnings here would have paid for the vacation that they otherwise wouldn't have gone on, and they decide to take a gamble that way. No, the vacation was set in stone, so it was paid for already. We'll get to the winnings in just a bit, because when you break those down, oh man, this insane plan becomes one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. But this was not a big company, let's just get that out of the way. There were actual stakes riding on this. So we've established the fact that if the Bills lose this game, a game in which they are expected to lose, seeing as Vegas has them as underdogs, seeing as they enter with a 4-9 record, and seeing as the Browns enter with a 9-4 record, and are playing like one of the best teams in football, that the Rodgers lose everything. They lose 4200 bucks or $12,000 in today's money, and they don't get to go on vacation, seeing as they had no contingency plan or insurance for this whatsoever. Okay, so what if the Bills somehow won this game? Even though no one was giving them a snowball's chance in the world at winning, if by some Christmas miracle, the 4-9 Bills somehow knocked off the 9-4 Browns, would the gamble pay off, and would the company come out on top? We're about to do some math, and you're going to realize just how insane this idea was. The tickets to the game were $15. The company paid $15 a ticket. They did not get a group rate discount, so they're not making any money there, regardless of what happens. You had 141 people who took the company up on this offer, and they were being loaded up into three buses. Now, we don't have an exact price, for what a charter bus cost back in 1986. But today, from everything I could find, it seems as though the average charter bus rental for a day cost $1,500. Obviously, the dollar in 1986 was stronger than the dollar today, so we have to adjust that number for inflation. So my guess is that adjusting for inflation, it costs $530 for the bus. However, they didn't rent just one bus. They rented three, it was originally going to be two, but they increased it due to tons of demand, and the company said they had to turn down another three buses full of people because they didn't want to eat an even bigger loss if the Bills lost the game. So multiply $530 by three for the three buses, and you've got $1,590. So if each person is paying $30 for the trip, and 15 of that is going to the ticket, which the company got no discount on, each person is paying $15 for the bus. There were 141 people, so multiply 141 by $15, and you get $2,115 in bus fees. You paid $1,590 for the buses. So if the Bills win the game, which again, may remind you, they were not expected to win, you come out on top by somewhere in the ballpark of $500. If they lose, you're down over $4,200. In what world are those good odds? Seriously, in what world does it make any sense whatsoever to do that? Imagine if there was a modified roulette wheel at a table in Vegas. This wheel has eight slots, with seven of them being black and one of them being red. You have to bet $8 minimum per hand and you have to place the bet on red. You can't place it on anything else. It has to be on red. If the roulette ball lands on red, you get your money back, and you get a dollar. If the roulette ball lands on black, you lose your money. No one in their right mind would play that game. Why? Because it's stupid. The odds are not just stacked against you, but you get nothing in return. It'd be one thing if they charged 50 bucks for the trip where at least if the Bills won the game, you'd be coming out on top. It'd be one thing if during that game a modified roulette, 
if the ball lands on red, you win triple your buy-in. It's still a stupid game where the odds are stacked against you, but at least I'd get that to some extent. You put $8 down, you can win $25, even if the odds are not in your favor. Okay, at least there's some logic there. This? Nothing about this makes any sense! Go a 500, lose 4,200 better than underdog? How does this work? Maybe you can say this was an attempt to get some good PR and increase their brand recognition and get their name out there. But not once did they mention that. This didn't come from a place of PR. This came from a place of panic after what happened in 1984 when they couldn't sell the last Bills Browns game. If this came from a place of good PR, they could have gotten it for any other game besides this one. Heck, they even admitted that they couldn't take everyone they wanted to because they didn't want to take the financial hit if they lost. They had no viable financial plan. This was the equivalent of the episode of The Simpsons where Krusty the Clown bets it all on the Harlem Globetrotters. I don't know how else to put it. I honestly don't. I don't know what the point of a promotion is like this where the more people that sign up, the more money you're in danger of losing. But risking $4,230 to win about $500 is dumb, especially when said risk involves an underdog winning. It's not like this is risking that kind of money on Alabama to beat up an FCS school. And it's not like this is risking that kind of money on an NBA team up by 25 points in the fourth quarter to win the game. This was a promotion run by a company that had no idea what they were doing and had no semblance of anything regarding odds and common sense. And to the surprise of absolutely no one, shocker, the Browns won the game because of course they did. To the shock of no one with the brain, they prevailed and took it by a final score of 21 to 17. Although the game was not that close as the Browns were in control the entire way. As you can tell from these highlights, the Browns led it 21 to 10 with about 90 seconds left in the contest. Believe me, the final score was not a good indicator of how close the game was. Cleveland led wire to wire, led it 14-3 of the half, led it by 11 points centering the fourth quarter, and forced a ton of turnovers, as they won the turnover battle and forced the Bills to turn the ball over three times, all on fumbles. Cleveland dominated the time of possession battle, holding onto the ball for 34 minutes, and Cleveland's run defense was superb, as not only did the Bills cough it up three times, but the Bills were held to just 83 yards on 3.7 yards per carry. The Browns won, and the Rodgers lost their money. Just like that, $4,230, or $12,000 in today's money, completely down the drain in one of the dumbest ways possible. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, how is this any different from what Mattress Matt does down in Houston? For those who don't know, he's the guy that will offer you free furniture if the Astros win the World Series. If they don't win it, you're on hook for the furniture, but if they do win it, you get the furniture for free. Well, a few reasons. Number one, Mattress Mac actually knows what he's doing. He will make a bet in Vegas on the Astros to win the World Series based on the amount of furniture he sells, so he will always come out on top. If he sold $2 million worth of furniture in that time frame, he'll place a bet to hedge that, so no matter what happens, he wins. Number two, Mattress Mac isn't selling the furniture at the same price the company made it or bought it. He's not selling furniture that costs 200 bucks to make and acquire at a $200 price point. The Rogers did everything you should not do when doing a promotion like this. Mattress Mac would be in awe at how stupid this was. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the system getting exploited, oh, you better believe it. Because there were a fair amount of people on the trip who were not Bills fans. That's the craziest part about this, which you can't be surprised by. Instead, they were Browns fans who figured they'd do this and get to see their team win and get a free game out of it. There were Browns fans who bought up the tickets with the sole intention of getting a free ride to the game because they knew their team would win. Said Martha Rogers, My husband went down to the buses that morning before they took off. He said there were more Cleveland fans, it looked like, than Buffalo fans. Or maybe they were just wearing Cleveland colors because they were hoping to get their money back. So good job! 
You literally created the dumbest model in the history of models. I'm genuinely in awe of how little thought you put into this. And anyone that is surprised that this went backfired didn't stop to think for more than five seconds about it. And yes, the Rogers canceled their vacation, saying, I think we'll be spending Christmas closer to home. I got this awful feeling in my stomach this morning when everybody on the bus was wearing orange. Orange sweatshirts, orange hats, and orange sneakers. Even the buses were orange. I mean, that sounds like a massive oversight on your end, considering that you booked the buses, but that's beside the point. The point is that this backfired in spectacular fashion, and everyone with a brain could have seen this coming a mile away. Now, as for what happened after the game between these two teams behind me right here regarding Rogers' tour and travel, honestly, I'm not entirely sure of the details there, but we do know this much. Rogers' tour and travel had an office in Rochester. I found the address to that location. That address no longer exists. It is a completely different company now. They also, in the late 80s, had an address in Buffalo. That no longer exists. And I looked at documents regarding the history of that address. In the early 2000s, they were still not in that location. So, presumably, they went out of business. I don't know if this Bills-Browns game was the reason for that, or what led to that, but based on how they talked about their financial situation and how it wasn't exactly the best before this, considering that they were canceling their vacation as a result of the Bills losing, yeah, I, I don't think this scheme helped at all. I think this company genuinely went under because of this horrible decision. And what's crazy is that the company learned absolutely nothing from this. The Rogers learned nothing from this expensive lesson. As Martha Rogers said after the loss, a loss which literally prevented them from going on vacation, and put them in a financial hole of sorts, the Bills are improving. If Cleveland plays at Buffalo next year, we'll do it again, or whenever. I'm just glad for their sake that the Bills and Browns didn't meet in Buffalo again until 2004, so they couldn't go into further debt. The NFL schedule makers saved Rogers' tour from their own stupidity, especially because they learned absolutely nothing from this debacle. Maybe that's why Art Modell moved the Browns to Baltimore, Maybe that was the true reason. It wasn't that he wanted to get a new stadium, or wanted to spite the city of Cleveland. He just wanted to prevent the Rogers from being dumb with their business model. So what do we learn from all of this? If you're going to run a business, and run a promotion involving a sporting team, look at what Rogers Travel did. And then, do literally the exact opposite. If your plan involves taking a huge chance on an underdog to win the game, then it's stupid. If your plan could cause legitimate financial pain to you and your company if it backfires, could cause you to cancel your vacation to Florida, and it's more likely than not to backfire, then it's stupid. If your plan involves odds that are stacked against you, then it's stupid. If your plan involves minimal gains if you somehow win, then it's stupid. If you can lose more than you can win, that's stupid. And if your plan for a football promotion relies heavily on a severe misunderstanding of how the sport works, then it's stupid. No matter how you want to slice it, this promotion and this plan by Rogers Travel was stupid. Because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this plan backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9pm Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.